I struggled a lot in my first year as a software engineer. After talking to other friends in tech, I realized that a lot of our problems were pretty similar. Knowing what I'm about to show you would have made my first year a lot simpler. But, you know, hindsight is 2020. Make sure to watch the end to see how to win paid coding courses. If you're struggling with anything related to tech or coding, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to break these down into four sections. Number one is expectations, number two is learning, number three is the job search, and number four is working on the job. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's jump right in. Expectation number one, know that you're going to fail a lot. When I was in my coding bootcamp, we had practice problems every single day. I failed almost every single one of those. Also, in the job search, I applied to around 150 jobs and got one offer, which means that there were a lot of rejections. In that first job, I failed a lot and even broke production a few times, which is pretty normal for a beginning software engineer. If you can't accept failure, you're not going to do well in this field. So, shifting your thinking is super important. View each failure as a part of the process of becoming successful, and honestly, it'll take a lot of mental strain off of you. Okay, so expectation number two. Things are going to take a lot longer than you think they will. Timeboxing is extremely important. When I'm approaching practice problems, I ended up finding out that timeboxing it to around 25 minutes and then looking at the answer or a solution if I got really stuck helped me a lot more. Not everything needs to be perfect or take up a bunch of your time. You'll have to let go of perfectionism in the learning process. If it's not a core concept and you're spending way too much time on it, take a note of it and come back to it later. Number three is the most important determinant of whether you'll be successful in this field or not is consistency. This means that building the habit of coding six to seven days a week is a lot better than just doing seven hours one day a week. In every bit of the process, this counts. So study a little bit every day, do a practice problem every day, apply to a job every day, depending on what stage you're in. Part number two, this is the learning. One of the most important parts of the learning process is finding out a learning strategy that works for you. So in college, I took a Java class and that class was horrible. I failed it and really didn't do that well. And that's a class that made me want to switch majors out of computer science, which I did. So after the fact, I realized that my learning style was much less about reading books and much more about taking courses, building projects, being very interactive, doing practice problems, being active with learning, I think is gonna help a lot more people, especially if book learning itself isn't your style. If you are a book learner, you can still apply active knowledge. Interacting with the textbook, highlighting things, doing practice problems, things like that are gonna help you retain memory a lot more than just blankly reading it. Number five is if you really want a job, you have to find a specific type of development and stick with that. I chose web development and I pretty much focused on that. But the first month I took a ton of different courses like web, mobile, all over the place. And honestly, that was super counter productive. My goal was to get a job as quickly as possible, so looking back, I don't know why I was taking all those different courses. Now, it's also really important to find a curriculum. Jumping around from all different topics in an area is also pretty counterproductive as well. Having a plan in place and topics to follow will land you a job much quicker. I highly recommend Free Code Camp, App Academy, and the Odin Project if you want to find a curriculum that's free that you can follow for something like web development. So along your journey, application of the technology you're using is the most important part. There is both theory and application. Theory is the concept that you learn behind everything, and application is how you apply that concept to the real world. One thing I found that was really helpful after a few months of testing this out was choosing one project that I was very familiar with and adding technology on top of it. There's a reason why a lot of tutorials out there choose to-do lists, and that's because people intuitively already know how they work. So when they're adding a new technology to it, like React for example, people can focus purely on the coding and not the design of the project itself. Any kind of new tech that you're layering on to your existing knowledge, I highly recommend choosing something like a to-do list or building a copy of an app that you already know how it works to apply that and learn the new technology. Before we go into the job search tips, please hit that like button. It really helps the algorithm and I really appreciate it. Okay, so now it's time for the job search. This is the hardest part in my opinion. I do have another video on my whole job search process, but I'll give you a few tips right here that will help out a ton. When you apply to a job online, it's probably going to a portal where it has a chance to get lost forever. It's going into the void. So I definitely recommend reaching out to real people at those companies as well. You can use a tool like Clearbit Connect or Hunter.io to find emails of people who work at those companies. Send them a quick snippet of a message and send your resume along with that too. Tell them you applied and ask them for some kind of Zoom chat or meet up for a coffee. You can use a tool like Clearbit Connect to find emails of people who work at those companies. Send them a quick message along with your resume and ask them for some kind of Zoom call or coffee chat. Then you can show off your skills and ask for referrals. Number two is that referrals are super effective. If you can get a referral, it's basically a back door into the company. Employees get a bonus once you sign on for that job, so if you can show them that you have decent skills, they'll definitely give you a referral. 
And number three, interviews are their own type of game and you have to get good at them. You need to spend a lot of time practicing. So what I recommend is cracking the coding interview, leak code and pramp. Honestly, just go on Google and search how do I get good at software engineering interviews and you'll find tons of resources. Next is you need to automate the boring parts of your job search. On all platforms out there, sign up for job alerts. This will help you filter jobs that match your criteria a lot easier. You can use a tool like Streak CRM to use snippets and schedule your emails to be sent later. What I usually did is I had a pretty similar template I would send people, I just loaded up by using the snippet in Gmail, send it off to the person who I found through Clearbit Connect. But every day I would find 10 of these jobs, schedule 10 emails to be sent and have them sent the next morning, right at the start of the workday. Now, if you need help on the job search, definitely join our coding discord. There are a bunch of people in there who've already gone through the job search who are willing to help you out if you're going through it right now. The job search is the toughest part, so if you want a community to back you, definitely check it out. Okay, so now for the final part, working. This is where I have a majority of the tips. Number one, buy noise canceling headphones sooner. Once I bought noise canceling headphones, I feel like I did learn a lot faster. And that's just because I was able to focus more. Over ear is great, but I prefer the minimalist headphones. And number two is you need to come up with a working system that works for you. I use the Pomodoro method. I also use a daily planner so I can time box all of my tasks. I also use an LCD board and I'll drop the link in the description. This is super awesome. It's a lot better than a whiteboard in my opinion because there's no mess and you can easily erase. I also use a free time tracker called Toggle just to make sure that I'm always on task and I can also review at the end of the day how long things took. Take breaks, drink a lot of water, and exercise so you don't die. And lastly, standing desks make a world of difference. I'll put the one that I bought in the description as well in my Amazon store. The next one is when you're on the job, you need to be planning out your code always before jumping into code. This is a mistake I made a lot in my first job and I really focus on planning everything out now which saves a lot of time in the long run. My general strategy is to break things into tasks, write my plan out on a Google Doc, do some research, pseudocode, test, and implement. The next one is to find a mentor. Now, this doesn't have to be a formalized mentor. This can be just be somebody in the industry who you check in with to make sure that you're staying on track. You can check in with them a few times a month to seek advice and make sure that you're staying on track. Just keep it casual. This can be a manager, someone you met at an event, or a teacher from your past. The last and final tip that is the most important that this whole process all comes down to grit and persistence over anything else. The hard part about working in a job and even back to learning is not the technical challenge, but it's actually the mental game. It's not necessarily about raw smarts. It really is about perseverance through problems and seeking help until you can find a solution. This is especially important in interviews and your job where they want to see that you complete problems to the end and persevere through all the challenges. When you're at your job, you need to focus on completing the ticket at hand and do whatever you can to get there. I hope you liked all that advice and found some value from it. I tried to make it as concise as possible. So now you want a chance to win paid coding courses. If you check out the coding contest channel in my Discord, you'll see that every week I'm putting out new practice problems. If you submit your results there, you're then entered to win a paid coding course at the end of every month. The more problems you submit, the higher chance you have of winning. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow on TikTok. And also, if you want a good project idea, check out this Lyrics iMessage bot. If you're able to improve the project, I'll feature you in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching.